One of the intriguing figures mentioned in the Bible is Og, the king of Bashan, in the land of the Rephaim. Moses, leading the Israelites, faced many battles, but the most notable adversary before reaching the promised land was Og, the giant ruler of Bashan, which Moses feared more than Pharaoh himself. His name appears ten times in the Bible, primarily in the context of Moses' journey to the promised land, emphasizing the significance of his role in that narrative. After the Israelites' victory over Sion, Og, the king of Bashan and leader of the Rephaim, planned to go to war against them. Og was among the last of the giants, hailing from the enigmatic Rephaim tribe, most of whom had perished during the days of Abraham. Despite facing formidable opponents before entering the Promised Land, it was Og who instilled fear in Moses the most, to the extent that he hesitated to engage in battle. However, God reassured Moses, instructing him not to fear, as victory was assured. This reassurance is reflected in the Book of Numbers. Do not be afraid of him, for I have delivered him into your hands. Numbers 21 verse 34 To comprehend the significance of Og, one must delve into Hebrew interpretations that provide background to his story. Our journey starts in the time of Noah. According to Hebrew interpretations, Og was a Nephilim, a giant spared by God due to his uniqueness among his kind. Commentators suggest that Og was the grandson of Shem Hazai, one of the rebellious angels who descended to earth and argued against God's creation of mankind. God challenged these angels, stating that they would fare no better than humans if faced with the same struggles. The angels, curious, were transformed into earthly bodies to experience mortal challenges firsthand. However, they succumbed to sin, leading to their union with human women, as described in Genesis 6 verse 2. Their offspring, the Nephilim, were formidable beings, perceived as giants by ordinary people. Yet, during Noah's great flood, these semi-divine entities perished, except for Og. Og's survival amid the cataclysmic event sets him apart, suggesting a divine purpose or intervention in his existence. This exceptional status contributes to the enigmatic aura surrounding Og. According to commentary, when the Great Flood began, Og jumped onto the ark and clung to its ladders. Noah saw that the floodwaters did not harm Og, and realizing it was a sign of God's favor, Noah allowed him into the ark, providing him with food. Og promised to serve Noah and his descendants forever if granted refuge on the ark. Thus, Og survived the deluge, emerging as the first refugee from the ark, fulfilling his promise by becoming a slave to Noah and his lineage. Og's presence resurfaces in the Bible, in an unexpected way, during Abraham's era. Genesis chapter 14 recounts a significant battle involving four giant kings who ruled and battled in the valley of Rephaim. This war resulted in the death of numerous giants and the destruction of five kingdoms. Amidst this chaos, Abraham's nephew Lot was captured. In a twist of fate, a refugee arrives and informs Abraham about the capture of Lot and the people of Sodom. This refugee's arrival is mentioned in Genesis 14 verse 13. And there came one that had escaped, and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. This mysterious figure, serves as the messenger of bad news to Abraham, setting the stage for subsequent events in the biblical narrative. In the Hebrew Bible, a figure saved from the Great Flood reappears as a refugee, linked to the story of Abraham's courageous act. Despite having no obligation, Abraham chose to fight against the four kings to rescue captives, including his nephew Lot. The refugee, identified as Og, emerges for two significant reasons according to Jewish interpretation. Firstly, as the lone survivor of the war, and secondly, due to his connection to Noah's story, being the first refugee from the ark. Og's visit to Abraham wasn't driven by affection but by an obligation to Noah and perhaps by malicious intent. Aware of Abraham's sense of justice, Og knew Abraham would feel compelled to act. 
The commentator suggests Og's interest in Sarah's beauty, hinting at a nefarious desire to claim her once Abraham will be killed in battle. Nevertheless, Og's revelation about Lot's captivity served as a crucial act of kindness towards Abraham. It enabled Abraham to rescue Lot, demonstrating his trust in God. However, Og's motivations remain questionable, hinting at a potential ulterior motive behind his actions. This narrative intertwines with Moses' story, where Og, the king of the Rephaim Valley, becomes a source of fear for Moses. Moses, apprehensive that Og's favor towards Abraham might translate into victory against the Israelites, only musters the courage to confront him after God's assurance of victory. God's command emboldens Moses and the Israelites to engage in battle against Og and his army. As recounted in Numbers 21:34, God reassures Moses. Do not be afraid of him, for I have delivered him into your hands, along with his whole army in his land. With divine assurance, the Israelites wage war against Og, emerging victorious. The biblical account in Numbers 21 narrates their triumph, where they vanquish Og, his sons, and his entire army, claiming possession of his land. Here is the story of the war as it appears in the Bible. So they struck him down, together with his sons and his whole army, leaving them no survivors. And they took possession of his land. Numbers 21:35. The narrative echoes, this time from the lips of Moses. In the book of Deuteronomy, as Moses addresses the people, recounting their desert journey, he recounts the war against Og. We took all the towns on the plateau, and all Gilead, and all Bashan as far as Salika and Edrei, towns of Og's kingdom in Bashan. Og, king of Bashan, was the last of the Rephates. His bed was decorated with iron and was more than nine cubits long and four cubits wide. It is still in Rabbah of the Ammonites. Deuteronomy 3 verses 10 to 11. Whereas the initial story merely introduced Og as the king of Bashan, the verse in Deuteronomy offers further insights crucial for identifying this king. Og belonged to the Rephaim lineage, and details about his dimensions are provided. It's worth noting that Jewish interpretations often carry mystical significance, defying simple explanation. As Moses highlighted, Og is depicted as the final descendant of the Rephaim lineage. Elsewhere in the Bible, it's noted. They were a strong and numerous people, as tall as the Anakites. The Lord destroyed them from before the Ammonites, who drove them out and settled in their place. Deuteronomy 2 verse 21. This associates them with other biblical giants, including the Nephilim who existed even before the Great Flood. If Og was indeed one of these ancient beings, then his lifespan extended over five centuries, born before the Flood and living nearly four decades after the exodus from Egypt. Completing the puzzle of identifying Og involves understanding the Rephaim. The Rephaim appear to be male giants somehow linked to the Nephilim, whom the Bible and ancient interpreters describe as giants. Evidence suggests that the Rephaim were present in Canaan during Abraham's era. Ancient texts, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, depict them as just over five meters tall. The decline of these giants coincides with the Israelite conquest of Canaan. The Gathic Rephaim might have been a smaller, lesser species like Goliath. Furthermore, the Bible portrays the Rephaim as deceased spirits or entities residing among the dead. The term Rephaim encompasses both ancient giants and the deceased, hinting at their terrifying nature. With that said, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more thought-provoking content on faith, history, and culture. Remember, sharing is caring. So spread the word and let's continue this journey together.